Severe weather's return is imminent as a Halloween week storm is going to cut into the central U.S. in the coming days. The storm will bring daily downpours and even trailing snow as it cuts across the U.S. day by day this week. This video has the details on everything you need to know on that storm, plus the crazy temperature anomalies going on right now. One Nation Weather thank you for taking time out of your day to tune into this video. As always, I'm going to be starting out with the mid-level pattern, which is a look 15 to 20,000 feet on up into the atmosphere. What happens up there always dictates what's going on at the surface, and wherever you see oranges and reds on this map, this indicates some higher pressure, and the tendency for warmer than average air as a ridge occurs in the jet stream. Meanwhile, blues and some of those greenish shades you see on the map indicate a lower area of pressure and some cooler air moving in. As we go into this week, the contrast between a high-pressure system in the east spring and warmer than average air, as well as a low-pressure system in the west, bringing cooler than average air is going to create a battleground zone with some crazy temperature anomalies as well as the jet stream cutting through and making for some active weather into the central United States from Texas all the way up to the Dakotas and Minnesota. Tuesday is going to be an active day. Even back into the Rockies will also have some wraparound cooler air and some precipitation. That could mean for some snow possibly even cutting out into some parts of the plains. That's what this video is going to be about, and of course, this is why I'm overviewing it first, so you can just kind of see the setup and why what's going to happen is going to happen. By the time we go out of our Tuesday, going through our Wednesday, and then heading into the early part of our Halloween Thursday, you can see the storm bringing this cool down into the west is going to weaken a bit as it tries to punch out into the central plains, but overall, we're still going to have the jet stream pretty feisty from Texas all the way on up to the Great Lakes on our late Wednesday going into our Thursday. In those same areas where the jet stream is cutting on through, that's where we'll have the best chance for some showers and storms to make their way into the same areas. By the end of this week, that trough and associated storm cutting into the central U.S. will pretty much dissipate, and we'll go back to ridging over a lot of the east, meaning these storm chances will at least temporarily go down before they can rise back up again. By the way, I wouldn't have such awesome and detailed maps if it weren't for my partners over at Weatherbell. If you'd like to check out their free trial link, it is below in the description to this video. Also down below this video for free, right here on YouTube, of course, you can always hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel and want more more consistent, accurate, and hype-free educational forecasts in the future. Let's get right back into this one, though, taking a look at the future radar overview for that storm that we're going to get into the week ahead. Now you know that we're going to have the jet stream cutting out into the central plains by the time we go into our Tuesday, but before that, we're pretty much bone dry for a lot of the central and eastern zones. Here's Monday through the afternoon into the evening. From Nebraska over to Maine, from Texas to the Carolinas, we're going to be pretty much seeing zero rain Monday. Back into the Mountain West, though, you can see something's brewing. We've got a couple weaker areas of low pressure and some associated valley rainfall, as well as lighter to moderate mountain snowfall cutting through places like Nevada and Idaho. This is only going to pick up by the time we go out of our late Tuesday into our early Wednesday as we actually see a surface low pressure system cutting right on out into parts of the Dakotas and Nebraska. This overall zone that I'm circling here has the best chance of some form of rain or snow the further west in this circled zone you go. Heading out of our Tuesday evening into our early Wednesday, we will have the chance for a few isolated severe storms into the central plains, but the further north and west you go through this zone, we're going to have some heavy rain, and that will try to transition to snow in western parts of South Dakota, and especially back towards Wyoming and western Colorado. Into early Wednesday, there will be some very quick and heavy-hitting snowfall accumulation back there into the eastern parts of the Rockies as this low kicks up. Also some gustier winds. By the time we go into our late Wednesday, we're overall going to see the snowy side of this low pressure system dissipate because, you know, we are still in October. We're not in the snowy season yet where snow just follows everything around. By the time we go into our Wednesday afternoon and evening, we're going to have a cold front stretching from places like Minnesota all the way back down towards Texas as the low begins to weaken in the upper Midwest. Still, though, a pretty solid chance for storms, and this could actually be the big day for some severe storms in places like northeast Texas, eastern Oklahoma, eastern Kansas, northwestern Missouri, and then down into southern Iowa, even Wisconsin dealing with at least a chance of some rainfall and some storms Wednesday going into our early Thursday. Notice Thursday morning, even though most storms probably won't be necessarily severe, we'll have quite a bit of action ongoing rain and storm-wise from Texas all the way on up to places like Michigan. And then here we go to the all-important time for trick-or-treaters or the parents of trick-or-treaters. Thursday, 7, 8, 9 o'clock in the evening, we're going to be having a low pressure system with rainfall in at least eastern Michigan. Yes, that will include some scattered showers in Detroit. Heavy rain through a lot of places like Cleveland, Ohio, back through Cincinnati, through Paducah, Kentucky, Memphis, Tennessee, and then all the way down into Mississippi, Louisiana, and southeast Texas. This front is going to be a Halloween nuisance, but it is also going to be bringing some much-needed rainfall without the excessive flooding because of how quickly it's going to be moving. 
So, you know, it's a, got a downside, but it's also got really a plus since many of these areas have not been seeing substantial rain in quite a while and drought has been developing, especially into some parts of the Ohio Valley. By Friday, as I mentioned, the storm weakening down based on the mid-level pattern map, and there it goes, falling apart in the eastern U.S. Friday afternoon. Now, before I discuss the severe weather aspects of the storm, I do want to discuss first the precipitation at totals, and then we'll talk about the gusty winds that are just going to come with this front as a whole. The precipitation is just going to be great, though. We're not looking at any widespread reds in indicating two, four, you know, six inches of rain. We're looking at a lot of spots picking up the blues and some of those yellows and oranges indicating anywhere from around a half an inch to around two inches in those deeper oranges. Either way, with as little rain that has moved across this area recently, we are not going to be looking at much of a flood threat if at all as this pushes through. This is just great news for anybody who needs some rain in these locations, even if it does mean some disruptions to Halloween plans for some folks. Also disrupting some plans, at least, is going to be the wind. We're going to be looking at the wind gusts in terms of miles per hour using the European model, starting with our Tuesday. This is going to be the most disruptive wind. It's going to be blowing around any unsecured outdoor objects coming out of the southwest U.S. and into a lot of the plains Tuesday afternoon if you are not careful. These greens, these yellows, these oranges shades on the screen indicate anywhere from around 30 to even 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts pushing on out into these zones. So if you live in a place like Kansas, if you have an unsecured umbrella, a trampoline outside, those are the kinds of things that could go flying in these kinds of wind gusts. They're not going to cause significant tree damage, but we could have at least some tree branches coming down on especially those dead or weaker trees. Here we go towards our Wednesday, October 30th. Notice the wind gusts overall dying down a bit as this front begins moving eastward, still 30 to 40 miles per hour in some spots as a whole from Texas up to Michigan. And then by our Halloween Thursday, the only places with some lingering gusty winds in the Great Lakes. Now taking a look at the jet stream looking up into the mid-levels of the atmosphere here, like I was earlier in the video, but this is looking at those wind speeds. This helps you look for troughs, and those indicate where we're going to have the best chance for severe weather as we enter that part of the discussion. Into our Tuesday, October 29th, that's going to be the first day into the afternoon, evening, and overnight hours into our early Wednesday, where we're going to have to watch for some severe weather. And it's on the southeastern side of jet stream energy pieces like this, where you tend to watch that best chance of severe storm. So you can guess, based on this, heading out of Oklahoma, into Kansas, parts of Nebraska, as well as Iowa, surrounding spots in northwestern Missouri as well, maybe towards southern Minnesota even, we're going to have that best chance for severe weather in those locations. I'll break that down in more detail in just a moment. Heading out of Tuesday into our Wednesday, the jet stream energy is sliding just a bit east. So now eastern Oklahoma, southeast Kansas, a lot of Missouri, into southeast Iowa, that's where our severe weather chance is going to be most elevated as we go into our Wednesday afternoon, our evening, and then even into our early Thursday. That could even include the best chance for tornadoes that we see all week in some locations. And then by the time we go into, say, our Thursday, notice as this pushes towards the Midwest and Great Lakes, the jet stream energy is becoming more horizontally oriented instead of vertically oriented, and that indicates that we're starting to see that flow kind of broaden out. I think severe weather will be a possibility as we go towards our Halloween, but overall it's going to be lower as this pushes towards the Ohio Valley and surrounding spots. Here we go taking a look at my brand new type of graphic that I've made right here on the channel. It is the severe risk zones graphic as we go towards our Tuesday, October 29th. This is basically if you have been a follower of my channel for a while, you know what my severe weather scale looks like. This is a little bit different, just giving you some words to kind of represent what the different zones indicate. From Texas all the way on up towards Minnesota and Wisconsin, the bright green zone indicating a few severe storms possible Tuesday and Tuesday night, but especially there if you go into places like Nebraska, Iowa, surrounding communities, more isolated coverage, a little bit more than few definitely being possible. Here we go into our October 30th, which is our Wednesday. That's when the best chance for severe weather and scattered severe weather at that should come from North Texas into Oklahoma and Southeast Kansas. Even into Missouri, though, we'll at least have some isolated chances for severe weather. This threat on our Wednesday will include not only damaging winds and the possibility for some hail that could get quite large, but also those supercells, and there could be a few tornadoes as a result of that, so be prepared. Then, is nature going to be bringing us some spooky storms as we go into our Halloween? Well, there is certainly that possibility for at least a few stronger to severe storms. I've got you in at least the bright green if you live anywhere from places like Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York. On the back down to Northeast Texas. By the way, if you enjoyed these graphics, let me know down below. If you did not enjoy these graphics, I'd also like to hear that feedback down below because these are brand new severe weather graphics right here on the channel. But now let's go ahead and talk about the temperature aspects because we do have a huge ridge for now before the trough begins cutting out towards the central U.S. in the coming days. Here we go into our Monday, October 28th of 2024. Because we're not going to have much rain going on, because we've got a ridge in the jet stream in the central U.S., most spots from Texas all the way in up to the Dakotas and Minnesota, 15 to 20, even 25 degrees above normal. For this time of the year. But by the time we go towards our Wednesday, you can see how that changes. Remember, the front is really going to begin to make its way eastward. Severe weather threats in, say, Oklahoma by this point. 
and you can see how we're starting to see that front really crash on into the central plains if you're east of it temperatures 15 20 even 25 degrees above average into some parts of the mississippi valley ohio valley and great lakes behind it 10 degrees below average back towards the west and then as we go towards our November 1st, we're going to enter a little bit of a quieter pattern in terms of our temperature anomalies, a little bit less rain going on across the country as well to end this week. 5 to 10 degrees above average for a lot of the east, 5 to 10 degrees below average for some parts of the west temperature-wise, but no crazy temperature anomalies. The ones that are crazy, though, are going to carry us from Monday all the way through Thursday, and that's what I want to cover now using the daily high and low temperature graphics from the National Digital Forecast Database. Starting out on our Monday morning, believe it or not, this morning is actually going to have the least anomalous temperatures that we see all week across the country, except for Friday. So this is going to be actually the most normal day at least to start Monday anyway, for parts of the plains, for the east, back towards the west as well. You see your community as I go through each of these maps, even if I'm not circling you, you can certainly see these numbers as the entire country is being covered on this graphic. The area I really want to hone in on, though, as we go into our Monday afternoon is pretty obvious. We've got temperatures well up into the upper 80s, even surging into the low 90s in some parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Don't want to leave any state out there that is seeing those numbers. Those boxes, anytime I'm talking about high temperatures through the rest of of this video. Those boxes indicate a forecasted record high. Temperatures never being that warm before since records have been on the charts. That is crazy for a peak temperature to be at 90 degrees this time of the year in the Red River Valley when we should more like be say 70-ish degrees. As we go out of our Monday and into our Tuesday, look at the Tuesday morning lows. Any circles indicate record warm lows. Temperatures never being this warm before for minimum temperatures in the day since records have been capped, and I guarantee you these are going to be breaking these records by a mile. Not literally, but you get what I mean here from Texas all the way on up to Wisconsin. These numbers in the 60s are just crazy for this time of the year. We should be in the 30s and 40s for morning time temperatures in a lot of these communities, and especially the further north you go. Des Moines, Iowa, we could be at like 69 or 70-ish degrees onto our Tuesday morning. These are just unheard of numbers. Back into the west, we're going to be in the 30s, meanwhile, behind that front, and you can definitely see how that trough is really cool in the temperatures down there. Here we go into our Tuesday afternoon. Just like the morning, we've got a big swath of warmer than average air. We're going to go from the 50s and 60s in the morning to the 80s to near 90 in the South Central Plains by our Tuesday afternoon. Through parts of the Mid-Mississippi Valley and the Central Plains, a lot of 80s that will include a place like Omaha, Nebraska, into Des Moines, Iowa. And then look at all those boxes for record maximum highs over here into Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. These areas are going to see plenty of low to mid 80s on October 29th. What a crazy feat there, and the numbers are only going to continue to warm up even more anomaly-wise in those zones as we go towards our Wednesday as the front squeezes in through the central plains. Notice we've got some 60s there in the eastern parts of Kansas while we were in the 30s in the western part of Kansas middle parts of Missouri and into central parts of Illinois. We're in the mid and upper 60s. Meanwhile, as you go back on over to, towards Wyoming and Montana, we are in the 20s and teens. So the contrast of this front, the same contrast that's going to bring these feistiness and these storms really being noted here on this temperature graphic as we go into our Wednesday. Here we go into our Wednesday afternoon. Again, a lot more 80s down here towards the south central plains and the Gulf Coast, but we're going to be even seeing upper 70s and low 80s, the most anomalous numbers for this time of the year peshing on up into the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. Detroit, Michigan, you could get very darn close to 80 degrees, and even 77 would be a record on our Wednesday afternoon. Here we go into our Thursday morning. Notice the cool air starting to spill eastward through the Central Plains. Still got some record warm lows out ahead of it, though, in places like Kentucky and over into Ohio, western Pennsylvania, as well as west central New York. Buffalo, you could wake up to some 60s or at least upper 50s for your minimum temperature on our Thursday morning. And then here we go into our Halloween at the afternoon temperatures. A lot more mild, a lot more normal with 50s and 60s into the Midwest and Great Lakes Thursday afternoon. Despite the front weakening down by this point, we are still going to be seeing some precipitation and some warmer than average air being forced eastward. So we've got a lot of 70s and 80s in the east and a few of those will break records, especially into the northeast U.S. where 80s are more uncommon for sure this time of the year. If you want more updates as this pattern unfolds and of course with any weather patterns in the future as it looks like things are going to be getting really active here as we head out of October and into November, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button down below. I like to keep things factual and no crazy hype right here on the channel. I'll catch you right in the next update with all my custom graphics to come with it. One Nation Weather.